Ask what the gap is ideal between bearings and bearing necks of rotors of turbines. And there, first of all, let's just pay attention to care with information that is not official from the manufacturer, from the turbine or equipment, any equipment whatsoever. That's why I always try to make it clear that first place that you should consult all information specifically and mainly about time off. It's in the turbine manual or in the equipment manual that you are operating. This is for a basic reason is not the manufacturer. He has all the responsibility about the information he provides. So if you are doing some operation, some adjustment with dimensions or clearances outside those recommended by the manufacturer, has a problem, this could turn against you, including generating some penalties and depending on the case, or the criticality or what happens as a result of this modification, the manufacturer turn against you and the responsibility if reversed, then only the supplier can give you the correct answer and only he is accountable and responds to the information provided. So always consult and always keep well-recorded conversations, technical information and operational recommendations that are passed to you over the turbine. If they are not all included in the manual, thus avoiding any type of problem, it's that story at the time that gives you the problem that the thing stinks, then they will want to know the details, and then you might get some word of mouth, then that you didn't take care to record, and sometimes, because of that, you sin and end up doing badly in the story. Now, if you don't have or don't have the manual or easy contact with the manufacturer, or sometimes it is obsolete and very old equipment, anyway, so we can talk generally about bearing clearances as a reference, the ideal clearance, the acceptable clearance, I will try to help talking a little about this, in a much more generic way, okay, so let's go. The ideal clearance of a turbine bearing, it depends a lot on several factors, chances are you've already used or heard about some rules pretty basic there, probably related to the diameter of the shaft there and the rotor bearing neck. One thousandth of an inch plus one x inch shaft diameter, two thousandths of an inch plus one x inch shaft diameter, 0 0.0015 or 0 0.0020, x the shaft diameter in inches for minimum or maximum clearance, one one thousandth, x the shaft diameter for minimum clearance, twice that for maximum clearance. Anyway, there are some criteria there. If you notice all these references, they will give, at least at most very close result. It is certain that all of them cannot all be correct, but maybe it can even be used as reference. First of all, the first care talking about time off it must be with the greatness, so make sure you are using the same units of measurement. Then use the slack multiplier millimeter with millimeter dimensions, inch to inch, converting whenever necessary. It is very common you find information about time off mentioning inch units. So that's why I'm talking, okay? Another detail is that there is no standard for this type of leave. Some places will mention time off radial, while others I will mention diametrical clearance at the end. Whatever, as long as you adopt the same standard, your calculation there is to just leave it highlighted your reference, and I recommend working and always talk about diametric clearance. There it is minimal in addition to being easier and more intuitive, the dimension in millimeters and the unit for verification as well direct at the end of year plans, when the axis, even if it is with a radial caliper, you just multiply for two it's easier for me. And another reason to use diametrical clearance is that the operation the turbine is a typical turbine, and rarely it will have the same radial clearance at positions of 0 and 180 degrees. And a turbine there's also the issue of rotor weight. And everything may influence this analysis. That's what you need to understand why are there so many applicable rules. Let's see some important data in the relationship between power, torque and speed. How big are the torque of the turbine rotor? i.e. the lower the speed, the greater power, the larger the diameter of the bearing neck on the shaft, and the heavier the rotor, the greater it must also be a bearing. Furthermore, the higher the rotor rotation, the lower must be the diameter of the bearing neck, and the larger the bearing, the larger it must be the clearance required for lubrication. So, in order of importance, the main factors that influence the project and consequently, turbine bearing clearance, is the weight supported by the rotor by the bearing, peripheral speed of the rotor bearing neck, the viscosity of the lubricating oil and operating temperature. The engine is very heavy, it can damage much more easily the metal stop, which is very soft. 
for this reason that the cross-sectional area of the bearing it increases proportionally depending on rotor load, thus requiring more robust bearings. Also the peripheral speed of the shaft increases, obviously also with higher rotation, or when the shaft diameter increases when it is unfeasible make your face look too big then the designers they increase the length of bearing to supply this difficulty that's right changes the relationship between the length and the bearing diameter as the reference there is a standard proportion there it is 1x1 so if the bearing is 100 millimeters of length possibly it will be 100 millimeters in diameter there are also some disadvantages as with longer length bearings, as the length ratio the diameter increases a lot, we have less oil flow leaving the bearing, making so the tendency to make the bearing work at higher temperatures, and also axis deflection occurs. There is more diagonal contact with the ends of the bearing, this can also result longer turbines in bearing housing longer, rotor, anyway, more inefficient equipment. Greater drag on the axle is also important. We are less efficient the longer and heavier the rotor or the more flexible the shaft. More rotor deflection should be expected, and rotor deflection it may require increased clearance between bearings on the bearing neck. The viscosity of the oil is a less important factor than weight supported by the bearing and the peripheral speed of the rotor. Although they are also considered in the case of definition, mainly in turbine, the project staff. He is also highly regarded the equipment manual having to specify recommended turbine oils. Therefore, unless there have been modifications to the project, it is always best to consult the manufacturer, and that he is always better maintain lubricants recommended by them to avoid any type of problem. Another problem there is that people is sometimes neglected, and the issue of very small clearance. People care a lot about time off too big, and forget about the clearance too small. So it can cause problems there too, but even greater than the slack excessive. If the bearing has too much play, very tight. Very tight for vertical turbines. The criteria they can also be a little different. To begin with, vertical turbines, Generally the rotors are smaller and less heavy, and hardly causes rotor deflection like another horizontal turbine. Unlike the horizontal turbine, which receives more of the weight of inertia of the turbines that work with the rotor vertical, the load is reduced on the bearings. Furthermore, vertical turbine bearings usually they are cylindrical, therefore, they require much less clearance than horizontal turbine bearings when they are not bearings, even the roulette commercials. As long as there is sufficient radial clearance for oil film, the vertical bearing practically no additional slack is needed. So, to finish on the subject of time off, what is time off? Reference for turbine bearings with the standard. I'm used to using when you don't have any information for quick verification in the field. A reference of 0.0015x the shaft diameter for minimum clearance, is 0.0020x shaft diameter for maximum clearance. An observation here for small shaft diameters you will find using these calculations it's a very small gap. So, in any case, when it is a very small diameter and that doesn't give you the slightest break, he should use it as a reference. There is always a 0.1 millimeters gap. As a rule, this information, it should never be calculated by the user the mechanic, by the turbine operator, but it must always be given somewhere there by the equipment manufacturer. Show. Beauty.